Hi, this is the truth of love and this is Clutch. Today's topic, don't want to assume emotions are logical. Now, the reason I bring up this particular topic is that one of the most consistent questions I get to ask or get to be asked is why did my ex block me on this social media platform but not the other social media platform? And what is my ex thinking? And why are they acting counterintuitively from what they're saying and what they're doing and how they carry themselves? Why do they say they miss me but also say I can't be with you? So on and so forth. And the number one issue that I find is that most people assume that emotions are logical, that they follow a systems of rationalizations and reasons. Now, from an emotional sense, they, there is some reasoning behind it, some emotional rationalization, as we call it. But for the most part, individuals don't know why they feel a certain way, unless, of course, they're dealing with something like abuse, for example, in which case they are openly feeling the contradictory emotions in that particular situation. But in most breakups, whenever you're dealing with a situation where you're dealing with an ex, for example, who is rather direct and rather decisive and tells you, I love you, but I can't be with you, you're dealing with someone who emotionally doesn't really understand what they're feeling, um, or at the very least, from a logical standpoint, can't understand why their emotions are betraying what they're betraying. All they happen to know is that their emotions have taken a dial back, and they don't feel the same level of connection with you anymore. They don't feel that same burst of energy. And this is where it really gets complicated because depending on who you're dealing with and depending on the situation, it could very well be a situation where the emotions have just dried out and the relationship has run its course, at least for the time being. It could also be a situation where you're dealing with someone who has lacked that experience and therefore lacked a maturity level and doesn't understand that emotions in relationships tend to have their ups and they tend to have their downs. There are many cases I have spoken with people, many clients, who have entered relationships that have lasted years and have admitted to me fully that the relationship, quote, died somewhere throughout the relationship. And then it was revitalized. It was revitalized through the connection shared with this person through a sense of security, a sense of loyalty. The love can be regained if it's consistent, but both people have to want it. Both people have to be willing to work for it. And this is something that individuals, particularly on the younger side of things, we're talking about young adults, uh, I would say anywhere from the ages of 18 to 25, they're lacking that experience. They're lacking that reinforcement and that understanding that relationships do take hard work. For the most part, most of you will deal with a breakup at some point in your lives. And the reason that you're on this channel after all is because you're dealing with some kind of breakup. At the same time, we want to reinforce the notion that just because this one person didn't see value in you at this specific moment doesn't mean that they won't see value again in you in the future or more importantly that you don't carry value, that you don't mean anything. The idea is that whenever we're going through a breakup, we're dealing with all different types of insecurities and every single trauma that we've ever felt up to this point, at least every major trauma, is being brought to the surface, it's being brought to our attention whether it's issues with abandonment or issues with um, security or insecurity is probably a bigger one. All these elements play a dominant factor. And we as human beings have an obsession, I guess you could say, of trying to logically break things down in order to fully understand them. And by breaking things down, and this is particularly true for those of you that are on the fearful side of the spectrum, um, you feel that, that there is a sense of control being gained. You feel like you have some element of control by understanding why things work a certain way. But this is really reinforcing the notion of why we study psychology and why we study attachment styles to begin with. It's not to control the other person. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's to get a better understanding of where this person is coming from, but it's not manipulating the situation. The moment that you start manipulating the situation or try to manipulate the situation is the moment it will probably blow up in your face. So it's important for us to have a good understanding of the psychological aspects that we're dealing with, such as emotions, but also important to understand that we're only in control of our own actions and our own our own uh, direct communications. If someone decides to come to you and say, 
I don't want to be with you anymore. I don't see this relationship working. You can disagree with them. You can state your points, but at a certain point, you have to let go. You have to let them be. It's not within your realm of control to control how they feel about that particular situation. And most importantly, if they're lacking that experience and that maturity, who is it going to be that allows them to finally see that situation for what it actually is? And the truth is the only person that can do that and will do that is themselves. They will see through their trauma and their through their experiences that not everyone is as loyal and as loving as you might have been not everyone is going to be as giving as you once were but of course they're going to tend to double down on that concept especially when they start gaining a sense of perspective by dating other people by realizing that not everyone's the same and they'll rationalize to themselves because human beings tend to do this of saying no 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 it, it was it was really that bad it was really that kind of situation and i had to leave and so Slowly, the lie that they tell themselves and the story that they tell themselves slowly starts to mutate to fit their reality. So if it's a case where they're entering a new relationship and this new relationship is quote good, they're going to rationalize to themselves and say, no, it was for the best. But of course, if they enter a relationship that's shitty or they enter a relationship that doesn't work, that's when you're going to get questioning of one's ego and questioning of one's choices. That's when they're going to sit down with themselves in isolation, truly look at the situation for what it actually is and say, wow, my emotions were completely wrong in this situation. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would ask that you hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed, I would highly recommend that you do. And of course, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, information regarding that can be found on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net, or you can shoot me a quick email at clutch.tol at gmail.com. With that said, this is Clutch, signing off.